So the purpose of this video is to show how to send a message using RSA from our usual character of Alice to Bob. Okay, so the first thing is everyone needs to have a public and a private key. So Bob makes his keys as follows. First, um, the way he does this is he chooses two primes. Now, typically these primes would be huge, but for us, we're going to try and keep everything in a sort of manageable size. So first prime 37, second prime 29. And then he multiplies them uh, to get a number n. So n is pq, which in this case turns out to be 1073. Okay, now the next thing he needs to do is uh, calculate phi of n. So that's Euler's phi function. And since we have a formula for phi of n when, it's, when n is the product of two primes, all we need to do is plug it in. It's 37 minus 1 times 29 minus 1, which works out to be 1008. Okay, next step is start choosing your keys. So you're going to choose a number e, and in this case, let's say we choose 571, and then you need to find a corresponding d. So then from e, we can compute d. Uh, and that's by solving the equation 571 times d is 1 mod phi of n, so 1008. Okay, so we solve this using the Euclidean algorithm, which we went over in class, and you just get d is equal to 835. Then we have our public and private keys for Bob. So uh, his keys are uh, public key is e n, or in this case, it's 571, 1073, uh, and his private key is dn. So in this case, 835, 1073. Now, with that set up, we're ready to go on to sending messages to one another. And here's how that's done. So, Alice wants to send a message. Let's say uh, her message is some integer m. Um, 331. So, to do this, she has to encrypt it in order to send it to Bob. And to encrypt it, she computes some massive power of 331, namely 331 raised to the power of Bob's public key, mod 1073. And to do this, because it's such a large number, uh, what she does is she first figures out the binary expansion of 571 in order to be able to use repeated squaring in order to calculate this power. So 571 is 512 plus 32 plus 16 plus 8 plus 2 plus 1. And then she makes a table of all of the values you get by repeated squaring of 331. And so here's what I mean. If this column is your k and this column is your 2 to the k, then let's record 331 to the 2 to the k mod 1073 in this column. So here we're going to have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then dot, 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 up to, we eventually need to get to 9 because that's 512 is 2 to the 9, 
And so here we have 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, and then eventually 5, 12. And then over here, we just start taking powers. So 331 raised to the power of 1, 331. And then on the next line, you square it. And mod 1073, you get 115. And next line, you square it again. And mod 1073, you get 349. And so on, 349 squared, mod 1073, 552. And you'll notice something's going to happen if I keep filling out entries that does make life easier in the sort of very long run. And it's this, so let me just finish another line here. So 784. Now, if I keep going and I square and I square and I square, I get down here and I have 552 again. So you'll see that occurred up here. And so if I keep on squaring in this manner, I do get repeated values. So I'm not going to have to fill out an arbitrarily large table for very large powers. Anyway, on to the next step. So now Alice is going to use properties of exponents and the previous table in order to compute that large power. So just using properties of exponents, what she's able to do is take this 331 to the 571 and write it as 331 to a sum. Right, 512 plus 32 plus 16 plus 8 plus 2 plus 1. And then the point is, this breaks up as a product of 331 to the 512, 331 to the 32, and so on. And all of those powers appear in the table we just created. So 331 to the 512, that was 552. 331 to the 32, that was 784. 331 to the 16, that was 1,045, and so on. And we just fill this out. So a long sort of series of products, and then we take the whole thing, mod 1,073. And if you multiply that all out, you get 829. So that's the message that she sends to Bob. So she sends 829 to Bob. Now on his end, when he receives that message, he decrypts it by raising 829 to the power of his private key. So Bob decrypts by computing 829 to the power of 835, that was his D in the private key. And that turns out to be 331 mod 1073. So he recovers the original message.